All right. God bless you, brothers and sisters. It appears that the devil is fighting us this morning and the devil is a lie. We certainly want you to pray uh, that we get through this. Uh, we were talking about uh, the uh, gods that Moses confronted. Now, remember, when God uh, sent Moses down, uh, as we said in pre previously, that uh, the people want to want to know who who sent you up? Because again, they had been under the influence for 450 years, under the influence of many of the Egyptian gods. They had heard that God was out there, but generation lived and died and saw no results. So when the Lord says to Moses, I am that I am, tell them I am have sent you. Uh, they, uh, God was about to reveal who he was. Uh, the first plague that came, I'm going to go through these so we might see. The first plague that came here, uh, was turning the water into blood, turning the Nile River into blood. Uh, this was a direct confrontation to the Egyptian god Happy, spelled H A P I, uh, Happy. Uh, this was the the water bearer. Uh, it was the Egyptian uh, a god of bearing water. Uh, he was the god of the Nile River, uh, and the Nile River, of course, was the main source of of all of their uh, uh, agriculture and other various things. The first confrontation is against the god of the mighty Nile River. Uh, the thing that happened was that the Egyptians of Pharaoh were able to reproduce this miracle out of a small uh, a pail of water, small, small cup of water. And Pharaoh was convinced that it was a trick. Now notice this. The Bible said that God hardened Pharaoh's heart. And he told Moses in advance, I'm going to harden Pharaoh's heart. And the reason why Moses did this, or why God did this, was because he was about to confront every Egyptian god. Every time Pharaoh said no, Moses went out and brought a plague. They went to their Egyptian gods, and their Egyptian gods could not stop the God of Israel. The God of Israel is greater. That same God is the God that we serve today. So happy, the Egyptian God of the Nile was the first one that was defeated. The next one was Heket, spelled H-E-K-E-T. Uh, and this was the goddess that had the head of a frog, had the head of a frog. Well, after the uh, Nile River, all of the frogs died, uh, the river stank, and these frogs who sought uh, home, homage in the, in the river began to come into the city, uh, began to come into the village. Uh, and so now they call on Heket, who is the god of the frogs, and that God is defeated. The third one is Geb, which is the God of the earth. Moses took dust, threw it in the air, and the plague of lice, the plague of lice came upon the people. Uh, and when the plague of lice came upon the people, of course, they go to Geb, the God of the earth, and Moses, the God of Israel, defeats him. Kepri, the K-H-E-P-R-I, which is the God of creation in, in Egypt, uh, the movement of the sun uh, and rebirth. Uh, what did God do? He allowed darkness, darkness to come upon Egypt. And the darkness was there for three days. And so again, this was a confrontation to Kepri, the Egyptian God of creation and the movement of the sun. The next plague was against Hathor. Hathor, the Egyptian goddess of love and protection. And what happened? God allowed the plague. Moses stretched forth his rod, and the plague came against the Egyptian cattle, and all of the Egyptian cattle died. But the cattle of the Israelites remained alive. A confrontation to Hathor. Isis, the god of medicine and peace. But now there comes a direct attack against the people. And all these were against the cattle and against the river and the frogs and the lice. But now there's a direct attack against the people. It's the, it's the plague of ashes uh, turned to boils, boils and sores. The people are afflicted with boils and sores. And when they prayed to ISIS, ISIS did not exist. So God proved himself. And mind you, as I said before, not only is he proving himself to Israel, but, uh, Egypt, but he's also proving himself to Israel. That there's no greater God than the one that they serve. Nut. The goddess of the sky, N-U-T, nut, the goddess of the sky. And what does God do? Moses stretches forth his rod, and it rains from the sky, hail in the form of fire. Now, again, they go to nut. What can nut do? Nut can do nothing because there is no God but the God of Israel. There is no God but the true and living God.
that we serve today. Seth, the God of storms and disorder, the God that's of the elements, Seth. And what does Moses do? He stretches forth his rod into the sky again, and the plague of a locust come. Now, Seth is supposed to present, prevent this, but God is showing his power. Remember, every time God hardens Pharaoh's heart, and by continuing to harden Pharaoh's heart, it reveals another power of God against the Egyptian gods. The Egyptian gods can do nothing. Uh, so that was Seth. Then there was Ra, the god of the sun, the Egyptian god of the sun. And what happens? Darkness falls upon Egypt. Now, this is really phenomenal, really a miracle within itself. God allows darkness to fall on Egypt, but in Goshen, where the children of Israel live, he remains light. And so God shows that he's powerful, more powerful than the sun god, because he created the sun. He created the sun. The sun is not a god. The sun is the creation of our God, the true and the living God. But then here's the last plague, the tenth plague, when God says the death angel. Now, you must understand that Pharaoh believed, and Egypt believed, that Pharaoh was a god, and that Pharaoh was the greatest god. And yet Pharaoh can do nothing when God himself sends the death angel, and among those that he takes is Pharaoh's own son. Nothing he can do about it. God shows that he's the greater. God shows that he's the more powerful. And brothers and sisters, I believe in this day and time, God wants to reveal himself strong and mighty. That's what David said in the book of Psalms, lift up your head, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up ye everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your head, O ye gates, even lift them up ye everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the king of glory. So the Lord says, I am that I am. Moses, when you go down and tell Pharaoh, let my people go. And when you go even to, the, to my people and say, the God of your fathers has sent me, what is his name? I am that I am. And I'm going to show you just who I am. Later on in the scripture, when Jesus came into the world, when Jesus came in the form of man, and Jesus said, uh, when the Pharisees had trouble with Jesus, they began to uh, uh, challenge him and, and confront him. And, and Jesus said, uh, you all are a bunch of hypocrites. Abraham would have rejoiced to see my day when they tried to say, we're children of Abraham. Abraham would have rejoiced to see my day. And they confront him, you're not even 30 years old, and yet you say you saw Abraham. Jesus made the same phenomenal statement as God. Before, Mo before Abraham was, I am. And that's why they became upset because this man blasphemes. He's putting himself equivalent with God because he was and is God in the flesh. The God that we serve, the Lord Jesus Christ, is the true and the living God. I am that I am. And anybody that makes such a statement certainly cannot say it in the sense of God because God is all present, all knowing, all seeing, all powerful. And the only way we can be saved is through Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you, brothers and sisters. We hope that you enjoyed that today. The devil tried to fight it, but I believe we got it all in. And I believe that you're going to be blessed uh, as we begin to go and do the, uh, 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 review this and put this together. We're going to all have it together. There were interruptions, yes, but the devil is a liar. You know, I found that the devil does not want us to hear this. You must understand, there is a devil, there are demons, but greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Now, I'd like to close by saying this. Uh, many of you have said to me, uh, Reverend, we want to donate to your ministry. This is what has been said to me. Uh, you know that we do these, of course, on, on the uh, Facebook Live page, and it goes all over the world, and I thank the Lord. And we remember asked many donations, but some of you have said that you would like to. So very simply, you can simply go to the Cash app. You can go to the Cash app and use the username brad2538 at Yahoo, which is my uh, email uh, address. You can simply use my email address, and we have it posted up there, uh, over there, yeah, on the uh, uh, ribbon there. Uh, and if you'd like to make a donation to the ministry, thank God we'd appreciate it very much. It'll be a great help and a great blessing. Until next week, this is Scott Bradley saying, God bless you. I love you. We thank God for you. Even if you're viewing the playback, you can still donate, and God is going to bless you for your giving. Until next week, this is Pastor Scott Bradley and the Rivers of Life Ministry saying, God bless you. We love you. We look forward to seeing you again real soon. Lead me, guide me along the way. Lord, if you leave me, I 
will not stray. Lord.